Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Erin Hodson, and I'm an extension entomologist at Iowa State University. And today I'm at the Southwest Farm near Lewis, Iowa, uh, where we're doing a field day for corn rootworm management. We've been getting some questions about the float test used to identify corn rootworm larvae. And so I thought I'd just show you the process. So it's the last week of June. It's a good time to try the float test if you've never done it before. Plants are around V8, and she's just digging up a small circle or a little ball of soil around the root system trying to not clip the roots. All right, she's got the plant out of the ground. The next step is to put in water. Alternatively, if you don't have a bucket of water, you can just shake the soil loose over a plastic garbage bag. And what you're trying to do is just dislodge the soil. And what we're finding today is sort of mixed ages ones that are less than a quarter of an inch and ones that are about a half an inch in length. So that's sort of the max feeding before they move into their resting pupil stage. And what happens is the larvae float to the top. This is sort of a middle aged late instar. It's pretty active again and they're cream colored, very slender. And it almost looks like they have like a double head because the head and the tip of the abdomen are dark brown. So part two of this is, what do you do with the float test? What is it gonna tell you? And so you're gonna see larvae or you're not gonna see larvae. And so that's helpful information to know, especially if you've mixed things up from a previous growing season. It's also gonna tell you the age of the larvae. Again, if you're seeing a lot of small ones, know that there's quite a bit of feeding left to do from egg hatch to pupation. The feeding period is about three weeks. And so if you're seeing a lot of older larvae, know that you're sort of wrapping up that feeding cycle. What it won't tell you is any type of threshold. So you can't say so many larvae in a bucket is a time to take action. And so unfortunately it doesn't help you make any rescue treatment decisions for that growing season, but it will help you make some decisions about what to do for the next growing season. What traits should you include, maybe crop rotation or other mitigation strategies. Thanks for listening.